Scout Christian Center Where burdens roll away I'm glad to see you again I welcome you to the month of February It was just like yesterday And we are now in February That tells you a lot That you need to be what? Prepare. This is your year. You will not miss the mark in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We are going to start in a short one. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We magnify your name for whom you are and what you are about to do this morning. Amen. We thank you for your mighty presence. The presence that makes us glad. The presence that rolls away burdens. The presence that empowers. The presence that teaches. We thank you again this morning. Amen. We discovered in scripture that as Moses came down from the mount, his face shone. The decree the same will happen to somebody in the house this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They will ask of them, where have you been? And the answer will be, they have been with God. It shall be so for them this month. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree we will obtain mercy. By your right hand of righteousness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He said righteousness and peace have met. Yes. Righteousness, mercy and truth have kissed each other. Lord, it shall be so for us this morning. Amen. From the truth of your word, we will discover ourselves. And know the cause to follow. In the name of Jesus. I decree someone here be lifted up. Someone here be changed. Someone here receive a new light. Someone here receive a new wisdom. Yes, a new grace this morning. That your house will be filled with fire. That no man that steps here will remain the same. Lord, as they come, they are empowered. Lord, as they come, they receive a new light that embodies them. Lord, as they come, Lord, they will receive something that will give them a testimony. Even the month of February, in the name of Jesus. We decree from the beginning to the end, the power of God will be mighty in this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, we cancel everything that is not of God in this arena. We saturate here with the blood of Jesus. And by the fire of the Holy Ghost, we decree, oh God, every negative be roasted by fire. That the power and the influence of God will take over from now. In the name of Jesus, that the hearts of men be receptive. Lord, we decree from now, move again in your power. In the name of Jesus, let it be like the third part that remain according to Zechariah 13. He said that third part, they shall be like them that we have silver that was refined and our gold has been dried. It shall be so this morning in the name of Jesus. Speak to us for your servants lift in it. In the name of Jesus. And the Christians are forgiven, oh God. Decree the bodies that seek be healed. And decree those who are looking for good news receive one now. In the name of Jesus. He said, as cold water to him that tested, so is good news from a distant land. They will hear good news this morning from above in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our God and our King. We begin with you and we'll end with you this day. Thank you for the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. We reign by this sin. In the name of Jesus. Now we open this meeting in the name of God the Father, the name of God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I welcome you back, everyone that was away for a couple of days. We welcome you back in Jesus' name. Thank you for being on time. We're just going to go ahead and get started. We have a lot today. 
But by the grace of God, I've been talking about the kindness of God. We have seen over the course of time that there's kindness to yourself. We have seen that there's kindness to others. Praise God. Amen. And we've all extrapolated that and we said there's kindness to animals, right? Praise God. Amen. But this morning we'll be seeing the kindness of God. There are very sharp things we'll be learning this morning. I just want you to probably have not heard some of this before. Just pay rapt attention as we read from the scripture. You get a new light. I'm starting from Ephesians 2. And I'd like a reader to read when I'm done with this. If, uh, Romans 1, 18. And then we'll see Romans 9, 23 and 24. Praise God. Amen. Ephesians 2, verse 1. He said, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Amen. Amen. So we are in time past ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in time past. In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Amen. Amen. And we are by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together. With Christ, by grace, ye are saved. That's a reminder there in parenthesis. Six says, and had raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now seven, very importantly, he says that in the ages to come, he might show, show what? The exceeding, the exceeding riches of his grace. What's the next slide there? Praise God. He said, through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mark that word in his kindness. Amen. Amen. Let us go to Romans 9, 23 and 24. Romans 9, 23. Well, let me start from 22, then I'll read on to 24. He says, what if God, willing to show his wrath, and make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he had called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. That was a question. Praise the Lord. So in this context, you discover there are two things happening. There are people who are vessels of wrath and there are vessels of mercy. Praise the Lord. He says, we did not do anything. If you follow carefully in verse 20, 22, he said, but God chose out of his world long suffering that there are people that he's going to redeem. Praise the Lord. The end of that redemption is that he will make known the riches of his glory on these vessels of mercy. Praise the Lord. But in Romans 1.18, we discover that there are people who have perverted the, what? This mercy of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. What did they do? He said the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Those who have turned this to imagery. Hallelujah. Now, it's clear from where we read initially in Ephesians 2 that the carrier of grace is kindness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You can read there again, verse 7. He says, making known what? The riches of his grace in his kindness towards us. Praise the Lord. So you were redeemed by mercy, through mercy, and for mercy. Amen. Amen. In his kindness. Very important that we relate to that. And then there are 
certain things that begins to happen when you begin to enjoy the kindness of God. Now look at verse 8. It says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. Amen. Some things come to mind quickly. That there is the rule set, and there's something that has to happen to us for us to enjoy this kindness that carries the grace of God. He says, remember not the former things, neither the things of old. In other words, the, the place we have danger with is in our memory and in our minds. Praise the Lord. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. He said, shall ye not know it? Praise the Lord. Amen. So if God wants to show you kindness, what he is telling you is that forget the things of the past. I don't care your history of yesterday. I'm going to start anew with you. Amen. 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 It calls that you walk on your mind. When those things come up, it says you are able to what? Cast them down. Praise the Lord. Amen. Every high thing that exalted itself what? Above what? The knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. I will take a quick question this morning. Just seeing that there are two categories of people in the world. Those who are vessels of mercy and vessels of what? Rot. But by chance, by his will, he took from the vessels of what? Rocks. By his kindness. And made those people, praise the Lord, uh, vessels of what? Mercy. In the previous verse in Romans 9, you see that the potter had choice to do anything with the clay. Right? And so is the mercy of God. So you discover that we assess this grace by faith. But we also discover that the carry of this grace is kindness. Praise the Lord. Amen. So every time you show kindness, you are impacting grace. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody, every time I show kindness, I'm impacting grace. Every time I show kindness, I'm impacting grace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have seen that there are certain ways you can show kindness. Kindness in deed, kindness in words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So many diverse ways, right? We can even show kindness in suggestion. Amen. Amen. Kindness by what? Correcting people or discipline. Amen. Amen. But this morning I'll, I'll streamline certain things that there are six major ways whereby this grace that is held in kindness can, you know, I mean the ramification of this grace, the way the grace spreads out. So like I would say, there are six major categories of grace that any man can enjoy. Amen. One is the grace of forgiveness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Number two is the grace of acceptance. Amen. Amen. Number three, the grace of presence, the presence of God. This is where a lot of people, you know, see it so be, you know, a, a preacher, a zealous child of God, you see the presence of grace mighty upon them. Number four, the grace of enablement. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Are we together? Yes, sir. Number five, the grace of completion. He's going to help us with number six. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'll leave that. I'll come back to that. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, you discover that God did not just forgive us. God found a way to get into us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is now dwelling in us by His Spirit. That's the grace of His presence. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So he did not just choose to forgive us. He did not choose to accept us to form a relationship with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. We discover that he now lives in us and he begins to enable us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important that we understand these things critically. Amen. Amen. And on the other side, I said that he chose to help us to continue to enjoy his grace by letting us know that the things that can hold us back from his kindness is that we must work on our minds and remove the negatives from our minds. Praise the Lord. And make sure we don't have a bad memory of the things of the past. Because those are the things the devil lays hold on and works against the Christian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, why do you think that the woman Rehab was the only one spared? Usually, in, in the course of time, you see that women and children are always spared in most battles. Why? Because God wanted to delete something about her past so that he can begin on a new note with her. Praise the Lord. Because there are certain things that will not make sense if the memories of people that have seen you before begin to see how God is using you. So God took her from that environment and put her in the genealogy of Christ. The same will happen to you shortly in the name of Jesus. That may be why you are here in a foreign land. God wants to begin something that will prove himself God. That will make known the riches of his glory. Amen. Amen. We have any question this morning? First Peter chapter number three. If you're there, you can read verse seven. Praise the Lord. So I will, I will say something about the other part of the kindness of God. We have seen that the kindness of God is the ability of God to make known his riches of glory, which we see that it's evident through what grace. Praise the Lord that we assess grace by faith. And we discover that he wants to work on our minds to help us break loose from the past. Also, there are certain things he has put together. And one of them is what we see in this scripture. He says that has been heirs together of what? The grace of life. In other words, God has made certain things. He has put things in order. The man is the head. Praise the Lord. Because God is a God of order. He says when we, when we don't understand this the rule, then we begin to have problems. I will explain what I mean. He said that it was not good for man to be alone. He will make a help meet suitable for him. In other words, from the discourse of that scripture, he discovered that what the writer tells us is that man is weak, right? And woman is like a a weaker verse, he didn't say man was strong, right? So it follows that the woman should submit, but the man should what? Love. Praise the Lord. It is kindness to understand that principle of God. You see, when we don't understand it from the aspect of respect and love, then there will be crisis in the home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why do I say that? Because the order has been set. He discovered that what a man really likes is that respect and love. And once the woman does not understand it, it's like we have two what captains in a ship. Praise the Lord. 
But he says for you to enjoy the grace of life. Now there's, out of the grace of presence, there's grace of hand, grace of feet, grace of life. And you find this grace of life, which is in partnership, in marriage. Praise the Lord. That is a sequence that you must understand. And that sequence is that the man should love his wife. Praise the Lord. And the language the man understands is the language of honor and respect. That when that is not given, there is a tendency that things begin to happen. One of the things that happen is what? There is going to be abuse. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two is that there will be hindrance to prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. One, hindrance to prayer on the part of the man. And then abuse on the part of the woman. Praise the Lord. Because that is the way the man has been structured. That is the way the man has been wired. So if the man is not receiving that, if it's not sound in scripture, he begins to react negatively. Okay. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Uh, let me come in. I, know I wasn't here last week. I've been trying to point and listen very carefully. Are we talking about the grace of God? Are we talking about the, the, the fruits of the Spirit of God that comes with? We were talking about charity, which is uh, in some fashion the Bible refers to uh, as kindness. Mm -hmm. Which one are we talking about? Talk about are we this uh, discussion is it on the grace of God? God I'm listening more in, the, in line with the grace of God. This is uh, or are you trying to relate grace to kindness? Exactly, that's what we're trying to do this morning. We've talked extensively on kindness. Now we're trying to streamline the aspect of kindness that comes from God. We have seen that kindness. Can be applied to ourselves. We can show kindness to people. We can show kindness to animals. Mm -hmm. So we are extraying the kindness that comes from God. Mm -hmm. and that's where we stand. That we say that there are vessels of wrath and there are vessels of mercy. You know, and that we didn't do anything to be choosing to be vessels of mercy. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's where we we started from. You know, we say that the the kindness of God is. Is a carry of the grace of God. Now let me ask the question then, if that is where we are going. You know, I can't be back. Grace, we say, is a matter of favor. Mm -hmm. We don't merit it. It's just through the special mercies of God that we see the grace of God. But it's also the, the kindness of God unmerited. It's the kindness of God also also unmerited. I will attempt to answer that question. You know, when, when we saw over the course of time, we saw in 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, we saw that charity has an aspect that is known as patience or long suffering, and an aspect that is known as what? Kindness. And we discovered in, in uh, John chapter 3 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So by extension, if God loved the world, as wretched as we were, as spiritually dead as we were, then God had already shown us his kindness, since kindness is a part of love. So we didn't merit it, obviously. So in other words, just like grace, Kindness is also a merit. I will beg to differ slightly. I don't know if anyone else has something to say. You mentioned Rea very interestingly. Rea, right? Yes. Was it Rea? Yes, Rea. God decided to show her kindness by, like you say, brought her out of her past, repositioned her, in other words, repackaged her and present her to the image of God. Mm -hmm. And through Rahab, we are here today. Amen. Because of the genealogy, David and all that, and then Jesus Christ came through. Mm -hmm. But if you read the Bible very carefully, you know that Rahab was not chosen because she was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. She was chosen because of what she did for God. She hid the people of God that went to spy. That were look, they were looking to kill them. She took them and hid them. And after hiding them, 
See, even made a comment to me, he said, look, remember, mm -hmm. when you come back to destroy, remember to spare my family. Mm -hmm. And they made a promise to her, he said, look, but for you, for us to do that, when you have time, we don't have time. For us to spare you, you also have a role to play here. Mm -hmm. You must play this thing here at the front of the door. Mm -hmm. If the angel of God, or if you come for destruction, and we don't see this thing, mm -hmm. do not blame us. Your blood will not be upon our head. We have done our own. And she did as she was instructed. And when they came for destruction, they saw that and they spared her. So now, if you want to relate that to kindness of God, we can come to a very quick conclusion that there are levels of kindness of God. There are certain levels of kindness that you receive based on the work you do for God. In other words, not, it is not, it's not unmerited. There are certain levels of kindness that you must earn. You earn it. You know that when you labor for it. I appreciate it. It must say last two weeks or three weeks on how to provoke the order of God, how to provoke God to work for you. There are certain, certain kindness that we receive that comes from provoking God. When you provoke God with your sacrifice, God can decide to show you an extraordinary level of kindness. In other words, as compared to grace, there could be uh, the kindness of God that is, that's not merited, but it's also a greater part of kindness of God is merited. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Praise God. You can add quickly to that list, we said, the six major ways to look at grace, the six kinds of grace that are very prominent in our sphere. The grace of freedom before the grace of completion. The freedom from bondage and sin and all that. Amen. Amen. Anybody have any contribution? I do have a question. All right. There's somebody in the back there. Let I think I mentioned earlier the, the, the seed of favor is kindness. I don't know if you followed in the course of our teaching. Well, I think the two words are used uh, interchangeably. Some version of the Bible will say favor. Some version of the Bible will say kindness. As far as I'm concerned, there's no major difference between favor of God and the kindness of God towards you. When God decides to show favor, He's kind to you. So, I don't think there's uh, some, some complex way, other way to explain the, the difference between favor and kindness. Like for instance, even now God, look at human being. If I come to you and I see that you are in me, that I'm, I'm in a, a position to provide. I give you uh, something, maybe I give you money to go buy lunch, something like that. I'm showing you kindness. And at the same time, I can say that I show you favor. Praise God. I'll read this scripture, just pay attention. Genesis 39, 21. It says, the Lord was with him, talking about Joseph and extended kindness to him. Praise the Lord. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You see, we are anchored. I said, the seed of favor is kindness. So, kindness had come before that favor. Well, because of that kindness, mm -hmm. they have favor. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that you can still use that same favor as kindness. Exactly. As Just as, like as we saw in the other, goodness and mercy, you can flip both back and forth. It's the same way we can relate to it. Brother Mike.
with their wife. That person is the real big bay. You don't understand it. <laughs> Can you break it down? Let me, let me break it down. <laughs> As a person of African descent, okay. in my culture, if I can compare here to the southern white women, when a, a woman sees a man, he greets. That is in the Nigerian culture. <coughs> Acknowledge that I see the man. If by greeting, in the white ball joy, you know, it may be fair that we don't want to go into intention. When a, a woman sees you, the fake is mine. But what I notice in the African American culture, I hate the one in that When you see it, you say, Woman pass you just like that. What I want to see was our Christian to roll as a man does it end with a that does not integrity end with only part in my household. Well, Brother Mike, as a man, this is not for the Bible. I'm just giving like a pole or something. So I just give you my own personal view as a man. You are number one responsibility into your household. Every other household or every other place. As a man, first of all, your number one responsibility is to your household. Now, when you come out of that uh, environment, yeah, it depends on what other things you are holding on to. Are you a leader? Is it in the church? Like for instance, I'm a pastor in this church. My first responsibility is not to this church. Surprisingly, guys, my first responsibility is to the house. Because church starts from the house. People don't know that. To quickly explain that because of my time, my time is fast, it's already gone up. There's this true story. A woman preacher, a very powerful woman of God. She used to fly out to everywhere, Africa, America, to preach whole crusade. And one time she came back home after like uh, two, three weeks of uh, outside. She'd be going like that. In a month, she would go like two weeks, three weeks. So we're doing the work of God powerful everywhere. Then one day she came back to find out that their husband had been having an affair. And she was so heartbroken. For more than a year, the husband was having an affair. She went to God and wept, said, God, I do that job. She wanted to divorce the man. Another pastor came. God sent another man of God to her and said, to Tell her not to divorce the husband. He said, I cannot take that. And so I go, Long story short, he asked the Lord, why I do your work, I'm faithful, I see many men that are supposed to do it, but I said, because I fear God. Why would my husband that is at home, what is his job, just to take care of him while I do your job? The Lord answered her, he said, you are not doing my job. And she was like, what? That can't be God. God said, no, you are not doing my job, you are doing my job. Because my job starts from your house. If you are a man or a woman and you do not keep your home in order, you are not doing the work of God. So you see, even as a pastor, your number one responsibility is your home before the church. That's very important. Care. Praise God. Amen. That comes to tell us also, you know, in 1 Corinthians 7, it says, and the primary responsibility of the man is his what? To his wife. He says that if if there be any gap, let it be for the reason of what? Fasting and prayer. That's enough kindness to you to understand that principle. Like I said, that principle of the grace of life. If you don't understand it, it could lead to abuse, and then the flip back is that it can lead to what? Unanswered prayer. 
And Brother Mike, I'll answer your question quickly. The truth about it is that both of us can assess everything God has, the riches of his grace. But there is an order. And if we go against that order, we are going to be in trouble. Praise the Lord. God bless us this morning. It's enough kindness for you to understand principles. Therefore, I say, kindness is the opportunity to do what? To serve. God bless you this morning. I decree you go from strength to strength. The new wisdom you have learned this morning will keep you going. And the power of God will be mighty in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, church.